dress that you come for the T1 to T5 training course. It's a Monday to Friday course, which explains to you from A to B on the officer camp. So, <coughs> Dylan has sorry mentioned yesterday about the equipment that you get on site. Okay. So, <coughs> your company is a installer or a um, reseller of the Freedom, or they can be both. So, if your company sells the Freedom products, or if they you're just installing on behalf of someone else, this is the type of equipment that you'll get. <coughs> the bottom left corner, this side here, is what you'll get on the on-site solution, and then the top right is going to be for the hosted solution. However, the CC CCTV can be done on both solutions. On some solutions, a client can add a copier as well, a Samsung 4070 copier. Who has ever installed a copier before? Two people. For the rest of you, it's extremely easy. All what you have to do is open the box, look for the little um, guide that's in the box, little pamphlet, and it tells you exactly where all the blue stickers are. Pull off all the blue stickers, make sure that the scanner is not in a lock position, remove the, the lock position, it will be in the guide explaining to you how to do that. Plug the power in, that's it. Copier set up. However, if you do need additional work done on the copier side, give us a call and, and we'll assist you. Okay. For an example, connecting it onto the network, scan to email and so forth. Okay. So, <coughs> Dylan, has, uh, Dylan has gone through the office of yesterday where there's configuration that needs to be done. Uh, have you gone through like the... So, no, I haven't gone through the stuff. I said we will cover that when okay. we're doing it today. today. Okay. So, the POBX, you, you will receive that as... A, from the box. There will be um, no licenses on there. There will be no um, configuration, nothing on the PBX. Okay. Because of it being a, a local PBX on site, then the configuration, we won't know upfront what the configuration is. So while you're at the client, you have access directly to this box. The client says they want speed dials, you log in, you create speed dials. As soon as you get the equipment, um, the MAC address on the, on the units, or normally on, on a label on the side, or you have to log into the unit to get the MAC address so that we can get the license. Okay. So as soon as you get the unit, let's say your install is Monday, uh, during Monday, then as soon as you get the box Monday morning, get the license key, or get the MAC address, send us the MAC address and we issue the license. The license we issue normally for the Freedom stuff, um, we try our best to do it within two hours. Okay. So while you're at the office setting everything up, send the MAC address, by the time you get to site, you'll have the, the license key. Okay. So the, the PBX won't be configured. You configure that on site. The rest of the hosted solution, if the client, if the sales guy gave us information, so the client gave the sales guy information up front saying, I want my extension names to be this, I want my extension range in the following uh, sequence and so forth, We'll get all that information and we'll set it up for the client okay. and for you guys. So there's no work for you really to be done. The only thing that you're going to have to do on site is if the client wants these DS buttons programmed. They're extremely easy to program. It's not like the office serve where you have to log into the PBX and program them. On the hosted solution, press and hold the button and you choose the option that you want. And then it's configured. Okay. Of course, if there's once you've get, uh, got into site and the client is requesting more information, or what you do is phone us while you're on the phone with us, we log in and, and, we, and we try and do it for you while you're on the phone. Okay. We try our best to, to configure it while you're on site. For example, pin codes for a client, uh, pin codes and they want to bar certain prefixes and allow speed dials. We try and do it while you're on site so that you can test it while you're there and give the, the client training on how to do it. Okay. Because we don't want to configure it and it doesn't work correctly, or the prefixes are wrong, and the client <laughs> says, but it, it wasn't configured correctly. So we try and do it while you're there. Okay. So we're done for the day. Are you guys happy? Yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Some of them will be really happy. <laughs> okay. We also do the, on some of the bundles, let's, Okay. On some of the bundles. Okay, sorry, because of him, we're going to start again. Okay. Still waiting for Coronel says in his 
on its way. Then when he gets it, we'll start again as well. Okay. Okay. On some of the bundles, we have the mobile solution. It's a fantastic solution where we'll provide a client a switchboard phone, a 6020 IP phone, a access point, and for an example, four Samsung X cover cell phones. Okay. That's all what they get on site. Okay, besides the LTEs and that. But the phones will be one switchboard, an uh, access point, and four cell phones. Okay, those cell phones, um, you can physically take the phone and you can throw it from this side to that side of the room and it should not break, depending on how hard you throw. Okay, well, it's a... 68 uh, mode spec phones. Yeah. It's a, rag a ruggerized handset. Um, it's made for industrial use in that, so it's a very great phone. It's okay. not that, the X cover. Samsung X cover phone. Yeah. So it's a it's a very decent phone, especially for a company that's got drivers out on out on the road. Gives them a couple of those uh, cell phones, and we we can do some configuration, and they're part of the PBX. Although they're out on the road on the cell phone, they'll still have an extension of the PBX. So on, on the freedom stuff, yes. can the clients have WeWork? It's possible. That's what you're speaking about now. Yeah, those it, yeah the, the, this, the mobile solution is WeWork extensions. However, uh, if, if a client has a normal uh, hosted solution, for example, five IP phones and a switchboard or so, then it is possible to have WeWork, and there'll, th there'll just be additional cost to that, which the sales guy will lay back to the We're going to have to put an additional AP in. Yeah, so you're going to need an additional AP um, depending on, on the size of the company, so multiple APs um, and so forth, yeah. Remember, the off-site off solution, we cable it separate from the client's network altogether. Yeah. So if they want WeVoip, we cannot go onto their Wi-Fi. We have to put our own access points in and go on a separate Wi-Fi. Okay, but I mean, it is possible. It's possible. It is possible, okay. The reason why we say if you go with an access point and you've got WeVoip extensions that you connect on our uh, access point and not the clients is because we can guarantee uh, quality of service on the, on the voice calls. This access point is going through our APN, which is a point-to-point -point connection to back to our call. Okay. Once the, however, if the client's mobile phone connects to this, there's no data on that mobile phone. Okay, because we provide voice only. So if the client wants data, disconnect from the Freedom SSID and connect to his normal um, SSID, which he'll have data and so forth. The web web, there's a possibility that, that it will register. However, is connecting via the internet back to, the, back to our call. So we can't guarantee any voice on it. The same if he's out on the road and he's connecting via mobile data, it's going through the internet, we can't guarantee uh, quality of service on the on the voice. If he's at the office, connects th through that. Of course, now it's back in our game. In, in in our game, and we can we can control what's going on. Okay. So, once you get to a site with a mobile solution, hand out the cell phones immediately. Tell the user, "Here's your cell phone. Set it up." Once the user has set up the phone, they give it back to you. The reason why we do that, it's a Android device. Any Android device, if you want to go onto the Play Store, we need to have an email address, a Gmail or a Google account on the phone. Okay. So they put in their details there, otherwise you're going to create your details, the client's going to get the phone and he's going to wipe the phone and reconfigure it for himself again. Okay. So give the phone to him, he sets it up, all what he has to do for a basic setup is just create a, a Gmail account for example. Log in, uh, log in on the phone with it, and then give the phone back to you. Then you go to the Play Store, you download the WeVoip application, we set that up, and the phone is ready to use. Is that on the, the X, X4? On the X cover. I believe that is bundle two, if I'm not mistaken, that's a mobile bundle there. Okay. And then you need, you need data for that? Yes, you're gonna need data. So when you first get the phone, connect to the, uh, the client's uh, Wi-Fi, download the WeVoip app, and then once the app is installed, then you connect back to the Freedom one. It's the salesperson's responsibility to tell them yeah. that if they yeah, put their sums in, I, I it is. I can see all the troubles with that. It's going to be a shared block. When the phone is updated, when the phone is set, it's going to be able to cheat on, cheat on, cheat on. Yeah. 
Look, but we... Not as a customer, no, we so so it's a salesperson's yeah. responsibility. But that's the reality of yeah. what yeah. you want to do. It's a salesperson's responsibility to confirm with the You either it's a work phone or... Yeah. Freedom is a voice bundle. Exactly. We don't do data currently on... You should actually just buy it from yeah. all the facilities that you've got. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's the mobile solution in, an, in a nutshell, which we'll go through a bit more. Um, there's sites that will, depending on the client, will have a failover solution on the LTE. So the two providers that we use is Telcom Vodacom. So for example, in this case, we've got Telcom over here, we've got Vodacom over here. Vodacom is our primary link. If Vodacom's towers in the area go down or the LTE APN on Vodacom goes down for any reason, this device monitors the traffic via here and then it's got another rule to monitor traffic via there. So if it sees, it can't see the destination via here, it moves it over that side. Okay. So it's an automatic failover from this device. And the failover on this device, monitoring the two links, is nearly immediate. Okay. Let's take worst case or uh, an example, say 10, 10 seconds. You can log into this device. You can go to the routes and you can see exactly the fail over when it happens. Okay. Keep in mind, all your devices, your PABX, your audio codes, your IP phones, oh, they all have a session timer that connects back to the PABX. Okay. By default, those uh, timers are five minutes, <coughs> so 300 seconds. So if this link goes down and this phone started on one minute, so for another four minutes, this phone won't connect to the hosted solution. So if the client needs an urgent um, phone call or so, they can reboot the phone, send a new request, and the new request will go out on the new, on the new link. Okay. Otherwise, just wait an additional four minutes, and the phone will re-register on the new APN. Is that adjustable? It is adjustable. However, uh, the more... If we adjust it down, yeah. what will happen is your data usage will become a lot more because your phone is going to be registering constantly. But not only that, now the handset is sending a lot of requests to the system. The system is going to start thinking that it's illegal requests coming in. And the, you're also going to, um, how can I say, the CPU power and everything. Because now the PABX is getting a, a request from 15 handsets from one side, for example, every 20 seconds. Okay. It's a lot of processing on that that the PABX needs to do. So it's been tested a few years back. Five minutes is the optimum time. Okay. But we are going to try and reduce that. So at this moment, it's, it's still five minutes, but we are, we are going to try and reduce it. I was just using yeah, 20 as an example. but yeah. So we'll, we, we're going to see what we can do on that. Okay. And in this day and age, who doesn't have a cell phone? Yeah. That's true. Okay. On some of the bundles, uh, the client will request a CCTV. Who has? Okay, I heard yesterday that most of you guys have done CCTV uh, before. Group is not. Okay, so no one here has done CCTV. Uh, no, no. Okay, so half of you guys. My terminology on CCTV is like you guys knowing doctor practice. Okay. The CCTV will be going onto the client's network. It won't be connecting onto the voice network. The reason for that is we can set up a DIN DNS for the client. The DIN DNS is a free account as long as it's a Samsung DVR from us. They register, well, you guys will be registering on behalf of the client for the DIN DNS and they can download the application on their mobile phone and they can view the, the camera system on their phone remotely or from a PC or so. Okay. So that's the reason why that will go onto the client's network and not on the voice network. We'll go through all these steps with you guys. Yeah, so what Sam, okay, Samsung okay, is... A, a, uh, default DNA is from Hanwha. Yeah. 
So you log on to their page and create it. Yes. Yeah. So it's Online, log on, create it, doesn't cost you a cent. I haven't done much of the CCTV, but the ones I've done, it's actually an application, you scan the QR code and yeah. It's actually very simple. This one is, you can set it up within five to ten minutes, depending on how fast you type. Yes. Okay. All the stuff coming out of stores, it doesn't have the new firmware. Oh, yes. yes. You have to just change the firmware. Yeah. It must take the firmware with them, otherwise. Yes. Okay. So, in order to set up the DIN DNS on the CCTV, the firmware has to be done first. Otherwise, you won't have the Hanwha security DIN DNS uh, settings on there. Okay. So you just log into Anwar Security's website, register a DIN DNS for that client, put in the details, and that's okay. it. The firmware the upgrade, very simple. Yeah. Put it on the USB, plug it in, go to firmware upgrade, say run. Right. Five, ten minutes, right? Ten minutes. No, not even. No, yeah. it's quick. It takes like less than 60 seconds. Yeah. But yeah. that... As to reboot and all those things, yeah. The firmware Mike says isn't on the... On the website. No, so when you guys do get a CCTV, give us a call. We will send you a Dropbox link where you can just download the firmware from. Okay. Any questions so far that that we've just no, briefed know. through now? <laughs> As in. Oh. Yesterday I thought you were alone in here because I didn't hear any question. I didn't. Uh, sorry, I was talking to myself. Wasn't <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys happy or you've got an understanding of what you'll get when you when you do an install? Okay. Yeah, but, uh, and that's a that that uh, network switch, the PLE one. Yes. How many devices can it download? Eight. It's an eight port. No, it doesn't always work. No, it's a full eight port PLE. If it doesn't work, uh, uh, if, you, if it doesn't eight. work, you log on. It'll be scanned on four uh, default when you get it out of the box. Yeah. We we'll log on to this one here and show you exactly how to make it full aid. You got the training manuals yesterday. Uh, okay, yes, yeah. So if you had some time last night, uh, then, okay. <laughs> then you would have seen in the manual, it shows how to log into the device uh, and activate the all eight ports for PoE. Okay. Because by default, it will only be four ports. doesn't matter which four. The first the four first will four always... The first four you plug in it needs PoE, gives it, it to it. Okay. Ask him next to you. He drove back to the office with the switch one day to say it was faulty. Yeah. <laughs> will, will you guys ever be putting data through the film stuff? I'm sure in the future we will, but for now, the answer is no. Because at some point, clients are going to want to use the X frames to access the CCTV. Well, uh, hold on. If they want to use the X phone to um, access the CCTV, most probably they will be off site. So it's not going to go through the network at the office in any. Yeah. Way. Then. Uh, then they will need data. No, but they're going to use data from their SIM card. From their SIM card, card to the client's network. So there's no reason to have then data on that. But yeah. in a big factory, the guys will walk around and want. I'm sure coming in the future, they will probably offer data on the SIM at an additional cost, obviously. <coughs> but yeah. for now, it's a so voice solution. Only. So, so on the mobile solution, do you supply SIM as well? No. We provide the hardware. The insurance is on the client side um, because he's financing it. So on any PABX, if a client yeah. <coughs> buys a PABX, insurance is on his side. If he wants to use it in the office, on the Wi-Fi, don't have to put a SIM card in. You don't yes. No okay. So the SIM card is on the client and any data or any charges on that SIM card is for the client. Okay. If you want to take it off-site, they just want to go to the Whether they put a page, you go, whatever, we don't care. If we, if we provide a solution, for an example, three mobile phones and the client wants four, it's not a problem. They can just do an add-on. Um, of course, just they have to chat to their sales guy, and the sales guy can do an add-on for additional mobile phone. Okay. If you install for another dealer or so, and the client asks you any questions about the deal, all what you have to tell them is, Please refer that back to the sales guy. Okay. Do not get involved between the client and the sales guy. That's just a tip from my end to you guys because you have sales guys, um, they already have a relationship with the client. You can say one thing wrong and the client isn't happy with that, he can cancel the entire deal. So just make, when, when you get to site, 
prepare yourself that you're the installer, you install what, what was given to you, any questions or so forth that's sales related, goes back to the sales guy. Uh, the problem okay. is also that when the stuff is promised that it's not possible. No. That's, that's if you know it, as an installer yeah. and you didn't sell it. And my if, suggestion is you phone the salesperson directly and say, yes. please speak to your client, this is what you promised, yeah. can't be done, or I can do it yeah. this way, but you're going to have to add this in, but let them resolve that yeah. with the client. So if you know something is not right, do not get involved with a client and tell them it's not right. Phone the sales guy immediately and, and tell him. If you don't know who the sales guy is, you phone our office and we'll phone the sales guy and we'll phone you back, giving you feedback. A lot of you guys are actually installers, a third party. In that case, uh, it's Melanie. It's Melanie, Melanie the picker, and Savim. Yeah. Okay. Follow Remem up those three, tell them what your issue is, they will resolve it. Remember those three names Melanie, Savim, and the picker. They'll get in, in touch with the salesperson, get the correct info, and they'll phone you back with the... What's the app for the Samsung to check on the cell phones? Because I know my division is IBM X500 and 450. Yeah. What's the Samsung one? Are you talking about the uh, 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 phone view? It's, it's actually in your menu. It's, exactly it's HDE viewer, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, HD-E viewer. We'll go through it. I'll show you what the icon looks like. I'll also show you what the interface, once the app has been installed, looks like. Okay. Okay. Um, I suggest we start with the Microtech. Yeah. The uh, LTE. Okay. Well, um, Quentin is pulling it up. Guys, the installation uh, of this device is very important. This mm. is what carries your signal back and forth. So if the quality on this is crap, Voice is going to be shit, the client is going to be complaining. So we have to make sure this is perfect. First thing is, you get a bracket and a pole. Do not mount it under the roof. Even if it is, the roof is going to be behind it, please go over the roof. Do not face it over the roof, especially if it's a tin metal roof. Reflections, heat is gonna cause shit with the signal. So put it on the side of the building that is facing the tower. So you're not pointing it over the roof. That will be the easiest hour. Right? Go as high as possible. If you look at the units, you can see the cable comes out at the bottom. I know it's round, it'll fit on the pole either way. Cable must come out at the bottom. Any reason why I'm saying that, guys? Because it's raining water. Yes, water is, doesn't like it. So don't bark it, don't shower it, leave it alone. Okay, if it's facing up, water is gonna get in and stuff. stuck. There is a screw hole at the back with a screw in the box. I suggest once you set it up, you do screw it up. The SIM card in this unit. That SIM card, sorry, has been locked for any SMS, phone calls, data, anything like that. It's an APN SIM card only. Okay. But we know the thieves in our country are brilliant dogs. They'll steal it in any way, in any mm. event. Only to find out it doesn't work, but it gives you additional work. You're going to have to get a new SIM, go out to the client, get onto the roof for it. So secure it down as much as possible. Okay. Cable that goes to it. This is an outdoor mm -hmm. unit. Outdoor cable, please. Okay. If you can, a shielded Cat5 as opposed to a unshielded. Okay. Okay, but even an unshielded outdoor cable will be fine. Do not run an indoor cable to it. It's not going to work. Well, it is going to work, but it's going to stop off quite quickly. Okay. The rest, we plug it in to a switch, put it into the log on to it now and run to the setup on it. I just want to explain one thing, yeah? When you do mount the bracket, there's a clip over here. This clip has to be on the top. The reason why it's not on top here, yeah? so if you do notice it's wrong, it's just easy access for us here. Yeah? But once you put it the right way, it will clip on in its place here. Yeah? Also, once you open up the cover, 
there's this little screw over here that you can remove and it will be marked earth okay if you have an earth cable from here for an example onto the pole and the pole will be earthed going down with a normal earth cable on a copper uh, uh, yeah, a copper uh, rod which will stick into the ground okay the reason for that is that thing is out on the roof highest point if there's lightning it will hit that thing okay so rather earth excuse me earth the the, the microtech itself against the pole and earth the pole into the ground with a copper rod okay No, the earth cable and the rod is, is separate. That will be on, on your cost for that. Yeah. The third party installers, the money that's being paid out for these are quite big. Uh, they're actually good money. I think there is some protocols that you are required to buy. Them. Yeah. So, you have to get that. Okay. And that's on both. If you've got both uh, units up, yeah. yeah, basically both of them is going to go down to the pole, and the pole is going to be done. So it's going to be a short piece, short piece to the pole. And then, can you, or can you just run it straight to the... You can run it straight down. Actually, that's better, because the pole may not be a good conductor. Sometimes you get them in aluminium, and you know, there's variances on there. So mm. if you can, push it straight down to the other one. Okay. Who has worked on any Microtech device before? Some experiment. Okay, okay, then you can come up and show. Okay. <laughs> Again. Okay. So the Microtech model that we use is the SXT LTE, um, which is a, the round device. It's a pointing aerial only um, router board. So you have to point it in the direction of where the tower is. If you don't know where the tower is, you're going to stand at the back of the unit and turn it on the pole. At the back of the unit, it's got LEDs that will tell you what the signal is. Okay, Once guys, for you guys that need any assistance with that, there is an app called LTE Discovery that you can download. This is the app. Only problem is if you've got a... Telcom 1, you obviously need a Telcom 7. If you've got a Vodacom 1, you need a Vodacom 7. This app actually shows you the direction of the closest tower. The tower is getting signal from. You actually need to move it. Sorry? Open signal also does it. Yeah, I've got open signal as well. So either one will actually work. Open signal or LTE. Open signal also shows LTE. That's exactly the same. I've got, yes, you can see both of them. This is open signal and this is. So, download the app, it will help with the install. Okay. Once you've aligned the Microtech in its place and the signal is uh, full bars on the unit, log into the unit and look at the signal strength there as well. Adjust it maybe um, one degree to the left or to the right, see if you can better the signal. Remember, uh, one degree on your side is a kilometer on the other side. Okay, a difference on the signal. This Microtech is an LTE router only. It does not fail over to 3G. Okay. So if a client requires 3G failover from LTE, we provide a different solution for them which we'll get through. Okay. So in order to, okay, in this manual, you'll notice there are two little icons there. If you're holding the control button, so if you've got the soft copies, what I would suggest, send me an email. I'll, my email address, if you guys want to write it down. Or I'll give you the group email address, so anyone will be able to reply. It is technical at mia.co.za. Just send an email stating you would like the soft copies of the training material, for the freedom training material. We'll send you a link for you to download the soft copy and any applications that, that is involved with this. Okay. Otherwise, holding the control key on your keyboard, click on either picture, and it, for an example, with a TeamViewer one, 
If you click on the picture, it takes you directly to the previous downloads of the TeamViewer website. Then you don't have to go and search for it and go into little menus and so forth. If you click on the Mio support one, it takes you to the MioTech website and there you can just log in, download the Mio support TeamViewer version. Okay. Keep in mind, we are licensed here at Mio for TeamViewer 7 only. It cost us a lot to get a license for the TeamViewer. For those that has ever inquired about a TeamViewer license, you'll know what I'm talking about. So we can connect on TeamViewer 7 and below. If you have TeamViewer 12 running on your PC, we can't connect to you. So please download the Mio support TeamViewer version. Okay. Do yourself a favor, just as a random request, Try and get a quote on, on a TeamViewer license. You guys will be surprised on the cost of them. There is okay. a download on the uh, Mio uh, site for it as well. Mio yes, site. on Mio Tech. Yeah, where you can download the, that application, the top one. And we can connect on any desk. The only problem is any desk has a very, very like, long lag on it. Okay, so TeamViewer is a lot faster. Any desk is, is a bit... But just go download that one. The theme yeah. Is, I mean, okay. So that is the equipment that you'll be getting, the power supply, the uh, power, power data adapter. So the power side will be your outdoor cable going into your Microtech. The data side, this can go directly into a wall box, for example, like this, into a patch panel, or you can take it to a switch. Okay. So that's the adapter that, that you'll get, and that's how you'll be connecting it. You'll get the pole bracket and the clamp as well. Once you open up the little clip at the back, you'll notice there's a little slot for the SIM card. Okay, that SIM card will be pre-inserted for you guys. The LAN connection and the screw here is the ground screw that you'll be grounding the unit on. Okay. To connect to the Microtech, you're going to need an application called Winbox. You can log into the Microtech website or uh, click on that link. On the Microtech website, search for downloads. Right at the bottom of the page, you'll find Winbox. Okay. Yes. Is there a distance limitation with uh, the uh, Yeah, default uh, Cat5 cable, you're looking at 96 meters. Yeah. No, but your injector, depends on your injector. No, no, it's, still no. it's still 96 meters. Okay. It's 96 meters because you have to take into consideration between your patch panels and so forth as well, your fly leads. Okay. The default IP address of the unit is 192.168.88.1. Admin, and there's no password on it. However, you don't have to be in that range to be able to connect to the Microtech. Okay, we connect to the Microtech on the MAC address. Okay, we don't worry about the IP address. Your PC doesn't even need to have an IP address and you can still connect to the Microtech. Okay. So once you've downloaded the, the application Winbox, you've installed it, the application will look like this. It will pick up any Microtech that's on your network. So for example, if, if you know there's a client that's got um, at least 15 Microtechs on their network, it will go and list all 15 for you. Okay. Then you know you're on the wrong network because you must only have the ones that you've plugged into. Just make sure your switch is in the correct, ne your network cable is in the correct switch. So in this case, we have three Microtechs on here because we got a failover solution. First one is we label each one so that we know what is what. LTE failover gateway, Telcom APN, and the Vodacom APN. The IP addresses, we have 102.168.1.1. Telcom is 1.3. So just ignore this number. And it's Vodacom is 1.2. Okay. So if you want Telcom to be the primary link and Vodacom the secondary, we just have to change the IPs and in the script that we load onto the, the gateway, we just change the script accordingly as well. 
Once you want to connect to one of these devices, you click on the MAC address. It will auto-populate on top. We have a default password of s at msung apn for all our devices. Small s. So all, lowercase. all lowercase. S, the at symbol. M-S-U-N-G apn. Okay. Insert then password in the password field and you click on the connect button. It will log you into the device. Once you've logged in, the menu structure will be on the left and there's sub menus there as well. Okay. So this manual that I've created and the reason why we have to give you guys training on all these products, for an example, if any of the device for any reason defaults, which we've never had before so far, but if a device defaults and it loses its entire configuration, you are able to log into the device, reconfigure it yourself and get the client back up and running as soon as possible. However, you're just going to need to phone us for the username and password for the APN details, but that is something that can take two minutes. Phone us, we give you the details and you can carry on. That's the only reason. Remember, all of this equipment is already pre-configured. It's pre-configured. Okay. Also, this is just for maintenance purposes. That's the great thing. And to help in an installation in case something yeah. goes wrong. Okay. Because you're going to need to know how to log into the unit to go and confirm the signal. Are you getting the actual CPU on the on the devices that you're connecting on, and so forth? Okay. Okay. That's another so thing. These devices are connected to DHCP. They configured as DHCP. Another reason why we cannot plug into the client's network. Okay. We're going to screw them over if we do. Okay. So You're going to mess them around, they're going to mess you around. Your stuff won't work correctly, their stuff won't work correctly. Okay. If for any reason we need to do a link on it, like if we've got an on-site and we've got a TMS, phone in or log into the unit and um, Switch the ACP off, which printer works a lot to do now, and then we like to configure the rest of the stuff on statics. Okay. Instead of spending five minutes on the phone talking to us to disable the DHCP, you can do it by two clicks of a button. Okay. It's just to make the install a lot quicker and easier for you guys. Okay. Okay, y'all are y'all won't be frustrated if you're sitting hanging on to somebody. So let's have a look at this and do it ourselves. Phone as little as possible, we all have. In this manual, we also explain how to do firmware on the units. This can be in the case where we have a certain version installed on the units and we find that we have one, two, one, two and three that is a problem on the units. We get new firmware, we, we'll release it to you and we'll ask you, for an example, to upgrade the unit for us. However, we have remote access to all of the units out in the field, if configured correctly. Okay. So we'll have access to them. If we don't, and the unit is completely down, the client unplugged into that, and we ask you to go and have a look what's going on on site. And while you're there, we're going to ask you, can you just do a firmware version for us? This is going to explain to you how to do it. Very, very, very easy to do. Click, drag, few commands, and it's done. Okay, so once again, you'll get a link for the firmware, you'll download the firmware, you'll log into the unit. On the left hand side, you're going to look for a menu called files. You're going to click on files, click and drag the firmware version. So yeah, you can see the, sec the middle one, the second option is router OS. You'll click and drag that file from your PC into this window. Just drag and drop into here. We'll upload the file, roughly a 10 meg file, and once that has been uploaded, you click on the new terminal window. We're going to go through all of this with practi uh, through practical as well. So you're going to open up new terminal, punching system router board print, so that it's going to print you the current firmware version that's on there. So for an example, it will say 3.33. You're going to reboot the device. 
Once you've rebooted it, it upgrades the, the router board itself, the main board of the unit. It hasn't upgraded the firmware yet, so it only upgrades the, the main board. Once it's rebooted, you do a router board print again. Have a look at your, your versions there. Okay, there they explain the reboot, uh, the reboot. Once you say reboot, you have to say yes. After reboot, you log back in and you say router, system router board upgrade. It's going to ask you, are you sure? You say yes, and it's going to tell you, you you need to reboot the device. You reboot it. It's going to take a little bit longer than normal to, re, to reboot and to, uh, come back up. Once you've logged back in and you say system router board print, you'll see upgrade version is 3.41 and current firmware is 3.41. Then you know the system is done. Okay. Once the firmware has been done, every firmware has default rules that they apply to it. Also known as like dummy firewall rules and so forth on, on the devices. However, we don't want any of those rules on the devices. We want our own rules. So all what you then do, you punch in system reset configuration, no defaults equals yes. Okay. What you can do as well, it's a lot to type out. All what you uh, type, on, uh, type in is SYS, press the tab button, it auto completes to system, or space, R-E-S-E, -E, press the tab button, it auto completes the words for you. So just punch in the, few, the first few letters, press the tab button, auto completes. Once you say you press enter here, it's going to ask you to reset and you say yes, the system will reboot and all default rules will be removed from the unit. Only then start your configuration on the unit. Okay. Do not take a unit out the box and configure it and expect it to work 100%. Always remove all default configuration and just configure what, what is needed. The same as on a PABX. If you get a PABX, they are, they are all blank PABXs. Um, I always take, before I configure any device, I default it to make sure that any rules or anything that's there is gone, so it's only what I need. To configure the device, there's basically five main things that you need to do. You're gonna need your LTE, username and password, LAN IP address, the DHCP, configured or not, firewall, the NAT, and the SIP ALG, as well as the SNMP. Those three must be configured. Okay. System is identity, LEDs, and users. Okay. So these are for information purposes. Users is where we configure the, the password, change the password. The LEDs is to confirm that the LEDs at the back of the device are actually active and that they're monitoring the correct interface. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to stand at the back of the device and the LEDs aren't going to show you what the signal is. SNMP is what we use to monitor all the devices. So, for example, the APN is connected. We can see that, but we'll get an alert as soon as the LAN cable on the data side for example, if it plugs out the switch, we'll get an alert to say that the switch on the, on the LTE went down. Okay. So we'll phone you and tell you, okay, the APN is up, but there's no devices connected to it. Then we know it's, it's network related. Okay. And we can also pull graphs to see what is the up and down time of the APNs. SIP LG, very important. Who knows what the SIP LG does? or what it is also. <laughs> okay. In a nutshell, as he said, it messes you around. Okay. But what it actually does is it changes your, your ports that you're registering from and to. So then it doesn't register correctly on the PABXs. On, um, for example, one of the solutions is the ISERV uh, solution, the IPDEC solution. So if the SIP LG is still on, it messes around with the ISO solution so that you can't, for example, make calls, you can't receive calls. You can phone internally, but you can't phone externally, stuff like that. Okay. 
OS confirmed that the SIP LG is off and NAT has to be enabled as well. Okay. If NAT isn't enabled, it's also going to be a problem for your voice calls on that. Do you guys know what NAT is or what it stands for? Network address translation. Correct, yes. What does it do? So if you, if you say you're looking, say you need to get to 192.168.1.1 and you're coming in on the public IP, the NAT will take that on that on the port you're coming in and convert it to go to 192, yeah. So all your local IPs, when you access a device on the outside and there's net on there, it converts your local IP basically into the device's public IP so that it knows how to get there and the traffic to come back. Okay. It masquerades your, your local IP with the public IP of the device. For routing purposes. For routing purposes. DHCP, do you guys know what DHCP is used for? Anyone? Eugene? Yeah, so that you don't have to configure static IPs on the devices. LAN IP address, what will that be used for? If you've got a file over solution and you've got the Microtech RB750, that RB750 will be giving out the DHCP, but if we have to switch off the DHCP, always make sure your device's gateway is the RB750's IP address. Okay. So all of this, what we're going through, explains also like a step-by-step -step how to install the, the bundles. Okay. Because you need to configure these devices in order to get the, the bundle up and running. Okay. On the LTE interface, extremely easy. I'm not going to go in detail much on this side. I'll rather concentrate more on the when we do it practical. Open up the LTE interface, double click the LTE, and you insert the uh, username and password. Keep in mind Depending on the SIM card that you use, this will be your APN name. Okay. And that is what it will look like. So you'll get a user and password field. That is your username and password, which we'll be uh, providing you with. And then your APN name is Mia APN. For example, if it's a telecom, and add default root has to be enabled. Otherwise, the, the device doesn't have a root to go out with. Okay. Very important, and this is for all installs. When you do a installation, if you've got one Microtech, three, five, doesn't matter how many Microtechs, or LTE devices. Let's say LTE devices, it doesn't matter. If it's, for an example, which we'll cover, is a Howie. 3G, 4G router, a Microtech can be a billion router. Always send, take a screenshot of your signal and you have to document that and attach it to your job code. Okay. Your RSSI and your RSRP, that is very important to look at. Those numbers mustn't be, for example, 150. 150. They must be as close to each other as possible. Okay. Otherwise, it creates a, like what they call a signal loop in the air. Okay. Your signal-to-noise ratio, always have that as minimum as possible. Do you guys know how to change these values? Sorry, which must be to RSSI, RSRP. Do you guys know how to change these values? Alignment. 
Okay. Because we're monitoring signal here. And the only way I, you can change the signal is alignment. So the RSSI, the lower the number, the better it is. Yes. Closest to zero. Okay. We've had sites. Um, their company has seen it as well before. I'm not sure who picked it up at your company. Um, but we've seen it at, at other sites. If it says minus argument sake, minus 27, the signal is too good for the router. Okay. It doesn't make sense, but it's too good. Turn it away. You have to turn it away a bit. Okay. It must be more than minus 27. <laughs> I think okay. it's around 30 or 35 up is fine. You can take it between 35. In some cases, depending on how close you are to the tower and so forth, take it on 40 to about 60. Okay. Exceeding 80, not good. Yeah. If, if you exceed a very high number, for example, 80, as Alan mentioned, you will experience problems. Or not you, the client. Okay. So, what is the spec for up and lower limits? Minimum, 40. work on 40, max, 60. Okay. So, if it's 27, above 60 is poor. Is poor. Remember, it works in a minor signal. Okay. So if it's 27, adjust it a bit to try and get 40. Okay. And then your signal to noise, of course, the lower the better. Okay. When the RSSI, why are you messing with that? Uh, RSRT. What's the ideal value for that? Uh, no, they must, they must try and be so close to each other as, as possible. So for example, if the top one is minus 57, the bottom one must be minus 60, m minus uh, so 59 you, you or so. You can adjust to get that as low as possible, right? Yeah. As we said, minimum around 35. Once you get that at its peak, you start adjusting for that. So you might have to pick that up a little bit to get, to get this. close to this. Yeah. So wherever you get the best signal there, but closest to this figure here, so that's your optimal. Deal with the state. No, That's because this has been taken with the unit being installed over here. What difference should one try to keep it within? What's acceptable? Is it if the I've done, I've done 20 years. Yeah. Uh, 20, 25 I've done in a hour So if so the difference is greater than, say, 25, you're going to have to test speech. Check your speech. Yeah. yeah. But you're going to have to adjust it to the best possible. Thing. Keep in mind, when you do test speech once you've adjusted the signal don't test with one phone call ask the client to at least make four concurrent calls because and as soon as it's load that is where you're actually going to be picking it up on and don't make a 30 second call yeah all your call for a couple months okay Therefore, the reason we started with this is this is, should be the first step in your installation in any given time. You put up your LTE first, test your signals, make sure you find. If you're finding a problem, phone in rather than say, I'm not too sure. Okay, but what I'm saying is if you hold the, the unit, it should be fine. I mean, to do a test. Yeah, just to Guys standing on the roof holding the unit. Yes, that'll work. Yeah. They are predetermined because the coverage is checked for them and they check obviously which um, uh, some of you better or from a telecom before they sent out. So they should actually theoretically not be a problem. <coughs> is there a check done by the new one? Yes. Before an order is checked. She, 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 she before the order is accepted, it's checked. Okay. Well, the but sometimes you'll know. Okay. You, you're on the board of something, man. Yeah. I've actually had situations where I've actually changed the LTE to face the opposite direction. So I'm leaving a lot of You're going to have to play with it a little. 
no matter how many apps we've got to check where the tower is, the best is physically check. Get on the roof, sit through the laptop, and that single straight meter at the back is a guideline. You move it till you get the highest bar. This, when you log in, is the only way to make sure. Okay, so don't go there and sit on the roof. People go, ah, that's the best. Go plug in and carry on again. Log into the router, confirm. Okay. You will be redundant to ask me before I'm always happy with that. The redundancy will be set up already. You'll be told exactly. Well, you're going to plug your unit into the uh, 750 admin. Mm. Once they're in there, you're going to do, you're going to log on to the routers manually. You will know what the uh, IPs are. And do the same check on both. And you might have to phone Quentin and say, uh, I know you've got Vodacom set as the primary here, but I'm getting a better signal on Telcom, so can we swap that around? Okay. As I said, we're using coverage maps. The physical decimal plan is the only way to Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay, so all of this will be, as, as Dallin said, pre-configured. We, all of this needs to be explained to you so that you know how to, sorry, I just have to mention this again, so that you know how to configure the devices. After this, we're going to take the physical bundle and we're going to, there's already devices there registered to the cloud, but then I'm going to ask you guys to go there and register the phone and as though you're on site, okay? So that you do the physical install as well. Okay. So the LAN address, as we said, that will be the gateway for all the devices. Very important. The DHCP, if there's DHCP required on the network, which will be there by default because that's how we configure it, so that if you have, for example, 10 IP phones, then you don't have to configure every phone with a static IP address. It makes the install a lot easier, and it also prevent some problems, for example, IP conflicts, because you can't remember what you've done on the first phone when you get to the 10th phone. Okay. So to do the DHCP, extremely easy. It's about eight clicks, and then the DHCP has been configured. You can follow through on that guide, how that was done. When it asks for a DNS server, there is no DNS used on the Freedom Bundles, okay. because all our IPs are public static IPs. We don't refer, uh, refer back to any URL names or so forth. Okay. The least time, by default, 10 minutes. Um, however, you can go and change that to 30 minutes, an hour, 24 hours, it doesn't matter. Okay. So as you see, there's 10 clicks and the DHCP has been, sorry, eight clicks and the DHCP has been configured. Okay. The masquerading, Extremely very important. Um, this needs to be done so that the voice is routed correctly on the network. Okay. To do that is three clicks. Chain source must be source net. Your out interface is your LTE because that's where all our traffic will be going. And the action is, so on your tabs on top, action, you have masquerade. And the net masquerade, what they refer to, has been enabled. So three clicks and it's done. It's not like other routers where you have to go and click multiple times and go and punch in commands and so forth. Extremely, no, okay. Extremely easy to configure. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. When you have the ISERV IP decked bundles, sorry, I just want to. Okay. So when you have the ISERV IP, IP decked bundles, this is extremely important that the SIP LG has been disabled. Okay. Otherwise, it will also mess you around with your speech and your phone calls. Okay. 
we'll go through this and I'll explain to you how that gets installed as well. Okay. The SNMP, this is what we use for the monitoring, extremely important. If we don't have these details configured on a, on a router, we can't monitor the client. Okay, so this is extremely important. Enable it, client name, who's the, the seller of the solution. For example, if your company has sold it directly, you'll have NGIP under the location and your client's name there. ABC Shoes, for example. And we trap all interfaces, meaning we're trapping the LTE interface as well as the Ethernet interface so that we can get activity on all of that. Okay. The reason, another reason why we have to monitor, why we monitor all these devices is so that you can go to a client and you can, for example, if, if, if it's been sold to a client and you can tell them, look, your stuff is being monitored on a live basis. We are able to download an app on our phones and we can walk wherever we want to into a customer and say, okay, look, yeah, I can see your branch A, branch B, branch C are active. This is the activity that's going on on their network. So it's a good upsell for, for, for a client as well because he, he knows that his stuff is being monitored Permanently. Okay. Sorry. Yes. You've got one you there, but the note's got two. Which is the correct one? No, you just select two. This is just, remember, these pictures are just example okay, so pictures. The, the, the yeah. top information. The top information, yeah. These are just information purpose pictures, okay. The LED configuration. This is what I mentioned earlier. If this isn't configured correctly, then the LEDs at the back, the signal strength, won't be visible at the back because those LEDs will be monitoring the incorrect interface. Always make sure your modem signal is looking at the LTE1 interface. Okay. These interfaces' names can be changed. However, don't change them. It's just better keeping them default because everybody knows what LTE1 is. If you go and put the wireless, GPS, whatever name there, I won't know what you're referring to. Okay. Of course, identity, that is what will be used when we open up the Microtech, the, uh, the Winbox application the first time. As you saw in the first page, it had LTE, the client name, LTE fell over gateway. The other one was a client name with VAPN, TAPN. That is the identity that gets set. So when you open up the win box, it shows you there. The next one is the password. Thank you. So we want to configure the password every time we configure a new router. As I mentioned earlier, the password we set to is S at Msung APN. Okay. If you can change the password yourself and you need assistance on the router, please let, let us know what the password is because we need to access that router then. Okay. And to change that, you can just follow on that slide there. Okay. Once you have changed the password, you've set up the APN, you've done all your details on that, this is another important step that you need to do. It's run a ping test back to our SIP server from the router. Okay, so once it's been aligned, everything has been configured, now you want to start testing your calls, run a ping test and have a look at your latency. If your latency is high, you're going to experience problems. VoIP, anything above 100 milliseconds is a concern. Okay, you will experience problems. So, in this case, because of it being a, a, a private APN within our network, your latency shouldn't be more than 10 milliseconds. There is instances where it can jump in then, but that is because of your signal. <coughs> However, the closest to zero is the best signal that you'll get. Okay. Keep in mind, 
these LTEs, uh, for example, this one that we that we got here now is a Microtech LTE. As I mentioned earlier, if a client requires 3G failover, we have the Howie LTE, okay, which we are doing uh, currently. We are also the other router that we do is a billion router. The billion router is a dual SIM router. So if you have a client that's got Vodacom Telcom for failover, you'll have two of these routers. One of these routers will, for example, have the outdoor aerials. We don't have them here, but they're big white poles that will, uh, plastic aerials that will be mounted outside on the pole. The one set will have that, the other set will have indoor aerials attached to this device. Okay, so the preferred network will be connected to the outdoor aerials. The billion router that we do, I don't have a unit yet to show you guys. It's got a dual slim, uh, SIM slot. So both SIM cards will be inserted into that billion router and it will have outdoor aerials, the same as what we use in this case, and that will be connected to the pole outside. Of a Look, outdoor um, unit, of course, it's outdoor, it's line of sight, hopefully, and um, so there's no signal or nothing in, in, in its way. Um, with the indoor unit and external aerials, we do, we have done some research and some testing on that on, on, on the aerials that we use. So the indoor and the outdoor unit, especially the billion router with the outdoor aerials, they nearly go hand in hand now. Okay. The longer your cable between the aerial and the, and the router is, the more signal loss you're going to have. So we have a standard of five meters that we use, and our signal loss is very minimum then. So the indoor billion with the outdoor aerials is just as good as a Microtech outdoor unit. Remember, anything can affect signal. So if it's indoor and there's window tint, some, some companies have very thick window tint, um, depending on where they are, that can affect signal. It's possible, yes. If you install a unit, do not install these indoor units inside a cabinet. Also, not just on top of the cabinet, try and install it as close to the window as possible. Okay. If you get a billion router and you have the external aerials, do not put the billion router inside the cabinet or on the shelf or so inside the, in, in the server room. What you need to do is, I just want to get a cokey. Here's a company, yeah, or the outside wall. Here's a roof. And mount the aerial over there. Argument sake like that. Run your indoor, your sorry, your your long uh, omni cable um, from the aerial into the premises. Have your billion router over there, and then your Get five cable back to the server room where the rest of the telephone equipment will be. Okay. So this router could be maybe just, yeah, by the wall, by a window or so. But do not install this billion in the server room. Run your Omni cable inside and somewhere inside the roof go in and connect your, your external aerials. This is the wrong, wrong setup, yeah? This is the correct setup. Okay. Do you guys understand? I'm not an artist, so please. Okay. So you can't install it inside a thin roof for protection? No, because then you're going to need protection from us. Okay. They are called external aerials for a reason. Install them externally. Okay. So, as I mentioned with this unit here, pin roofs, all of those things, problem. 
your internal units, if you are installing it inside without an external antenna, do not put it in the rack. Rack is metal. You enclose in the unit. You are dampening down that signal. If you have to put it close to the rack, put it on top of the rack. And that's that coming into server in the hall. Hidden somewhere yes. in the middle of the building. Yeah. It's not in the basement. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's if why you can, mount it where the signal. Close to a window, whatever the case may be. You can run a cable to it. Okay. So install it where there is best signal. Do not switch off or whatever the case is. So nobody goes there and just unplug it. It's going to bring the comms down. Okay. Also, if you install it in a different location where the server room is and you're using the client's multi plug for any reason or a, a plug over there, try and take tape or um, cable ties. Fasten that plug on there so that. The cleaner doesn't come and unplug it to plug in a vacuum cleaner. You can put a sign inside, use this plug for your vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So don't also ask a client for a sticky note and go uh, uh, stick it onto the plug because within the next two hours that sticky note will come off. Okay, but also adding on to what Quentin said, I don't like multi plug. Mm. I'll rather look for a wall plug somewhere, unplug yeah. that device, and yeah. plug that into multi plug and plug our equipment into the wall. Multi plugs go faulty like you cannot. Yeah. Just the battery backup. Uh, if the server is on, the server room is on battery backup. Yes, that I know. Yeah. No backup. No, okay. A lot of our equipment comes with um, UPSs, so yeah. we can't. So I know the other LTE keeps four strong or something. There, there is a battery backup. So the Huawei. Always Come with the battery back up on there. Yeah. The black ones, not the white ones. Yeah, the black ones. Okay. So try to stay away from multi plug as yeah. much as possible. Preferably look for a piece of equipment that can be moved to the multi plug. Talk to the client. <coughs> you don't want to unplug his server while he's working there and so he can move to the multi plug. So just watch that. Pointed, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not an only directional, it's a directional antenna. Okay. The Actually, even the other outdoor antenna that you're putting up, mm -hmm. it's all directional. It's not only directional. Face it in the correct direction. I understand. Yeah, but like you said, Lara, you had a client who did turn doors completely different way. Work better, yes. Yeah. So, so if you. Yeah. So it's only action. No. No, no. If your yeah, signal is. So, ref refer back to the, the notes on the Mercutech. Um, so, I'm going to go back on the Mercutech now. I'm going to log into the unit and show you guys how to do that. Okay. So, once I've opened up the Winbox application, it will list all the Mercutech that's on the network. As you can see, I've got my identities labeled there, so I know which one is what. Okay. For example, if I want to connect into the Vodacom APN, I click on the MAC address, I put in the password, and I click Connect. And it opens up that window there. As you saw, when I connected now, there were a bunch of windows open. So it remembers the last window that was open when, when someone connected. Okay. So when you've installed a unit, extremely important. Open up on the interface, double click LTE, go to status, and at the bottom you'll notice RSSI, RS, RSRP, and the SI, SINR. Okay. Take a screenshot of this. This needs to be added to your job card. Okay. As well as a ping test that you do back to our server. So before you do your, your test calls on that, do a ping test, 
make four concurrent test calls. After that, do another ping test just to make sure that um, your, 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 how can I say, your signal on that is still stabilized, it's still running smoothly. Okay. Talking about the job codes, along with your job codes, what you need to do is you, you need to take pictures of your install. You guys are doing an installation on behalf of someone else. Be proud of your work. So don't take a picture. If you've mounted this on the wall, don't hold your cell phone and take a picture of it. Send it back so we can see the work that you've done. We need pictures taken of the bracket that's been mounted outside on the wall. We need to be able to see the pole that's outside as well so that you haven't installed the pole at a 45 degree angle. It needs to be 90 degrees. Um, if you install the cabinet, take a picture of the cabinet. If you installed a shelf, which I'll explain to you guys where that comes into place, take a picture of all of that. Cable work. Even if you send us 30 pictures per install, that's fine. We have enough storage space. So send us pictures of all your installs. That is mandatory for every install as well. Okay. It needs to include the signal quality, as you can see there, the signal strength, and your ping test on the routers. Okay. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to go through the manual. I'm going to briefly go through it. I'm not going to go all in detail and explain every option, <coughs> but as I go on, you'll pick up what's in the uh, notes. I will get to you Sorry? Email. Yeah, so you'll be emailing it, for example, to the picker. The picker is the one that um, arranges all the installs for you guys, and they are having on file and so forth. Okay. When you get the device, first thing that we do, can you guys remember? Okay. So to check the firmware, we click on new terminal, system router board print, and it shows me the firmware there. To do the firmware, we open up the files, we search for our firmware. Here's my firmware over here. I click and drag. As you saw, click and drag into that window and it uploads the firmware into it. There's, oh, okay, there was a file there, it will override it. And if it's a direct connection like this, it's fairly quick. However, if you log into it remotely, it does take a minute longer or so. What version are you running in? Currently, the firmware that we require needs to be 643. You'll also see in the very top, it will have the client's name, dash winbox, and the firmware version. Okay. That creation time, is that from the unit itself? It does, yeah. Is it now you can set it to current time? You can go into the system and go and set up a time. There is a place where you can set the time on the system somewhere, somewhere um, and then whatever happens there, it will be logged. When, when okay. the units come get issued, will, will they be on this? Yeah, when, when you get a, a router from us, we do firmware already. Okay, so it will, all of this would, uh, will be done already. Okay. Only when it defaults itself, if it was. No, if it, if it defaults, the firmware will still be there. The only reason why I'm showing you this is if the firmware gets updated, let's say in six months' time, um, then we'll give you the link or so, and then we'll ask you to update it if we can't reach it. Otherwise, we do firmware on all the units um, when, when we get new firmware. On that other screen there, it's got the uh, factory firmware and then current firmware. Yeah. So if you do a factory default, will it default to that? Version? No, it won't. There's another uh, command that you can punch in, which will roll back to the... Factory okay. firmware, yeah. But any scenario we come across, it shouldn't actually go back there. No, it shouldn't. Okay. Okay. okay, once the firmware has been done, we 
open up the new term or new terminal window, reboot the device, log in, go to system router board upgrade, reboot it again. Once it's, uh, it's come up, then you punch in system router board, uh, sorry, system reset router board, no defaults equals yes. It's going to reboot again after that configuration starts. I'm not going to reboot this device so many times, it's just going to waste some time for us. So I'm just going to follow through after that. Okay. First thing that we need to do, interface, double click LTE, go to general, username, password, and who the APN provider is, Vodacom or Talcom. We select add root, we apply that, we wait for the LTE. For an example, I'm going to show you, I'm going to disable the link and I'm going to enable it again. It will tell you there's search in progress, attach in progress failing, meaning it's because I just disabled the LTE module of the unit itself. So now it's coming back up, it restarted that module and it logged back in. As you can see, it's, it's running now. It doesn't have any line with red in there. Okay. Once we've done the, the interface side, the APN, we go to IP, addresses, and once your APN has signed in, you'll see the top line will have a IP address, 10.1.3.2.1.58. That is this APN's, don't get... Try and understand, public static IP address, but public on our network. So if you take your mobile phone and you browse to that IP, you're not going to get access to it. If you're on our network, you'll get access to it. Okay. So it's public on our access, but not public to the public itself. Okay. It's a static IP. It's a static IP. That's what you guys use to log into the router. So that is the IP address that I'll be using to connect to any of the devices. <clears throat> IP addresses address list opens up okay next step is DHCP server this router <coughs> doesn't have DHCP configured I got I got this set up as a failover solution who can explain to me why this LTE Router does not have DHCP. Because there was conflict. With what? With the other router that you've got. Yes. Okay, so if you guys can turn this way. We've got our two LTE routers here. This can be Microtex, Billion routers, Highway routers, any router that, that we use here. They will not be giving out DHCP. They'll have a static IP address only. The RB750 is the one that will be giving out DHCP. Okay. And this will be the gateway of all the devices, not this. If it's a standalone device, the uh, LTE router will be giving out DHCP. And that will be the gateway of all the devices. On a failover, it's this one. Okay. We can't have DHCP running over here and here, and it's just going to mess things up. Okay. So that's why there's no DHCP configured on this one. I'm just going to run through it, but I'm going to delete it to show you guys. IP, DHCP server, DHCP setup. We want DHCP on Ethernet 1. Next, that is the address space we want because it's the same address range as what the router is. Gateway will be the router's own IP address. In this case, 1.2, um, if this was the DHCP server. So it will always be the router's own IP address as the gateway. Addresses to give out, we configure the devices from 10 to 50. Okay. So if you need static IPs, for an example, you've got an iServe solution or you've got an audio code and you want to assign them a static IP, then you can use anything below 10 or anything above 50. But in between 10 and 50 is our DHCP range. That range will depend on the amount of phones that you have. 
uh, for example, if, if it's a hosted solution and, and you've got a bunch of IP phones there, so normally 40 IPs for now has been, has been fine. However, we do have bigger bundles where you can have bigger uh, ranges required, then we can just increase the range. Okay. So yeah, I just click on next. DNA server we don't use. Next, least time, 10 minutes, 20, your discretion. And it's done. As you saw, I clicked next a few times and configured my range and it's done. Okay. If you log into a device and you would like to have a look what the DHCP addresses are that, that's been leased at, you click on the leases icon and it will show you what devices there are. The MAC address of the device, if there's a name for the device, and the IP address that was given to it. Okay. I'm just going to remove this one again because I already got one running here. To remove it, I click on it and I click the red button. However, I need to go to IP, pool, and remove the IP pool there as well. Okay. So that's the DHCP side of the router. Under the firewall, we go under net, we can click the blue plus sign. This window will open up. Chain is source net. Out interface is LTE1. Action is masquerade. We apply that, okay, and it's done. Under firewall, we go to service ports, SIP 5060 has to be disabled. To disable that, you click on it and you click the red X. So if I want to enable it, I just click the blue one. As you can see, it's now been enabled. Click the red X and it's disabled. Extremely easy for you guys. Next is SM, SNMP. And this is what we need to, uh, need to have configured so that we are able to monitor the devices. Client name, who sold it, and... Oh, we Sorry? No. We, under... No, the ports on the firewall. 50, oh. 60, not yeah, under the connections. Yes, so going back there, firewall, service ports, 5060. Disabled, yes. Okay. Next is system identity. That is just the identity, the name, whatever you see on top there. If you follow my mouse to the top, it will be the name there that we'll see. By default, it will say Microtech. You can't leave it default because then we can't add it onto our monitoring platform. So it has to be the client's name. Okay. LEDs, we need to confirm the modem signal has been set to LTE1. Okay, so that the LEDs at the back will monitor the, the modem signal so that you can see the, the strength of the signal. Lastly, we have users. Double click on admin. Go to password. Punch in your new password. Can you guys remember what the password is? Correct, yes. Brian, I'm glad you're seeing, I'm glad to see you paying attention. Can we make a backup of this file? You can. So, files, backup, give it a name, give it a password, and you back it up. Okay. Okay, that backs up on onto the, the. You can move that backup to your PC. To your PC again. Okay. However, it's going to take you longer. Okay, it depends on how many you have done. It's going to take you longer to back this unit up, to make a backup of it, save it onto your laptop, 
because by the time you've done that, I've reconfigured this device from scratch again. It's extremely easy, it's extremely quick to do. Yeah, but from the perspective of the installer, yes. the username and the passwords you start, so I don't have to phone you the next time it goes down. Yeah. So yeah. I can understand what you yeah. think of that. Yeah. But just sometimes, you know, trying to speak to somebody over the phone if you don't have remote access, because the guys will put their laptops on that network. Now, you can't see it, and you know there's a backup, so you want to just load the backup to enable remote monitoring. Maybe they've messed there because mm. technicians are technicians. But just handy to have that, you can load that because a lot of people, I'm sure you'll agree. It, it is. Uh, it is easy doing that, but when you start explaining to someone over the phone, upload the backup, make a backup, and stuff like no, that. No, no, all you want to do is upload the backup. Yeah, even that part is extremely difficult, we found. I don't know if you guys ever supported someone over the phone before. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's not always easy doing it that way. Okay. That's why we have a how to guide. So instead of spending 15 minutes explaining to the guy how to upload a backup, we tell him, you got the notes, go through the notes. Um, configure it, phone me and tell me in which window you have a problem and we'll help you from there. Because if he goes and clicks on backup and he goes and looks for his backup file somewhere on his PC, which he saved six months ago, I won't know where he saved it. Because he's going to ask me where he saved his, his backup file. No, but it keeps the backup on there first. Yeah, it will keep it on, yeah. But if this unit defaults for any reason, I'd... Okay. There's reasons for, for everything. I understand your reason, um, but it's not always that easy. Okay. That's the Microtech for you guys. This... If, if you get a, a site where there's... Uh, the LTE signal is... Great, it's 100%. Then we'll give you a Microtech um, outdoor unit, and then we can give you, for an example, a highway router, which will be for indoor if the client wants file over. So this will be situated indoor, and the Microtech will be outdoor. Okay, both LAN cables will then go to the um, RB750. So Let's just picture this as a highway router. This is indoor, this is outdoor. The LAN cables will go into the router board, not into the switch. You can take it in here, but the only reason why I say take it in here is because this thing is doing the file over. Okay. So that if this device goes down for any reason, this one at least can still do the, the routing and that for you. Okay. Even though you won't have access to this, but at least we know this is part of the gateway setup. So keep that together. Your phones are yeah. And another reason why you'd rather go in here as opposed to here, you might need the PoE ports yeah. for any devices that you're not programming. So they will don't need PoE, use the Mikrotech rather. Yeah. Right? Here's five ports at the back, which has been set up in a bridge mode. So you can plug your laptop into here if you don't have enough ports over here. So these five ports become part of the switch as well. Okay. So for example, the audio codes doesn't need PoE. This yellow cable can be plugged into that. And then you have an additional port here for our IP phone. So you can use the R as a switch. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on the setup on a Microtech itself? Okay. I got some screenshots of a sorry, of a billion router. Unfortunately, I don't have an actual manual on a billion router for you. Um, that will come in the near future. So I'm going to just run through the, the screenshots of the billion router. The billion routers are an extreme. They how can I say they are extremely great devices to use. The reason is it's an all-in-one solution. It's got an access point. It's got dual SIM. We can do external aerials. Um, it's got multiple ports at the back. So we have a, a, like a five port, four port switch in the billion as well. Okay. So just the billion itself replaces, can replace four devices by having one billion. Okay. So with the mobile solution, for an example, the billion router can replace this if need be then we won't be using the access point. 
we'll be using the Billions Wi-Fi built into it. Um, we can, if there's no IP phones on site, it can, we can remove the switch and we can connect whatever LAN devices are directly into the Billion, if this was a Billion now. So the audio codes also will go into the Billion. Okay. Um, depending on, on the Billion model, uh, they can come with two FXS ports at the back as well. So the billion can eliminate the audio codes for you as well. Okay. So instead of having five devices on site, you now have one device doing multiple things. Okay. One point of failure instead of five points of failure. Okay. Who knows the difference between FXS and FXO? Besides you and you. And you. And you. <laughs> 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 Sorry, FXO is? Is it a normal analog port? Analog port for what? What device? No. No. Okay. No. I learned it. You guys can learn it how you want to, but I learned it as on a, on a PABX, you have your CO lines, which is your trunk lines. Okay, so F, uh, FXO, CO, it's a trunk line, so your, your trunk will come in there. And then FXS, S is for a station, so that's your analog extension. So that's where your fax machine or analog device will plug into. Fax machine, uh, cordless phone, a SLT itself or so. So on a billion router, you have FXS extensions. On the audio codes, you have FXS. So on this device, it's got two ports here, which will be pre-configured. So you can plug an analog phone directly in here, and it will, you'll be able to make a phone call. Okay. Could you not, sorry? Yes. Could you not use those FXS ports into like a single as well? You can. So from a analog extension, Argument sake from the audio codes, you can take uh, a cable for each each port and plug it into your trunk side on your PABX. Okay, then your PABX has two trunks, although they're still converting back to SIP to the to the provider. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, if the client has um, they they got a seventy seventy, they got eight MGIs, eight eight sub channels and the client wants more trunks on site but they they don't want physical lines on site or they can't have physical lines on site then we can connect the audio codes there connect it to the fxs port and give them sub lines so in theory the the client will have 10 voip lines okay but brian to answer your question yes we can why would we want to the pbx is ip compliant so yeah we go directly, instead of through the audio box, go directly to the provider. That's it. But in, in the case, for example, if the client has eight lines already and he wants 10, yes. and there's no telecom infrastructure on site, you can increase them. Okay. Yes. Give him a hosted solution, and then he gets rid of the PABX, and we give him 20, 30 IP phones, which can do, if he has 20 phones, Excuse me, 20 concurrent calls. Okay, depending on the, on the bundle that, of course, that, that he took. Okay, so for example, if you take a 16 by 16 bundle, then you have 16 extensions, 16 lines. Okay, with every bundle that, that we give, argument, argument sake, the smallest one is a 4 by 4. We give you five free DID numbers, five VoIP numbers for free. If a client requires a, a sixth one, he pays for the sixth one. Okay. Initial setup, we give you one DID. When you get to SAT and the client says, okay, he wants a DID for his fax machine, one for this extension, one for that extension, just give us a call. We configure the other DIDs and there you go. Okay. We don't want to configure 100 DIDs which never gets used because then we're using up our number block. So we configure what, what, what needs to be used. You guys happy with the Microtech setup? If it's a failover device, for an example, two Microtechs or one Microtech, the setup stays the same. 
The only difference is if it's a standalone Microtech, you have DHCP. If it's a failover, there's no DHCP on the SXT Microtech itself. Okay. You guys happy with that? Okay. The setup between a failover Microtech, so for example, the LTE Microtechs, if you have two on site, set up in a failover, the setup that we've just gone through now stays exactly the same. The only difference is if you have one Microtech, um, then you set up DHCP on the Microtech. If you have two Microtechs, then you don't set up DHCP on either one of them. The, the you don't have the 750. The 750 will only be given to you guys if there's more than one LTE router on site. Okay. <coughs> Very important. Failover can be a Microtech and a Howie, or two Microtechs or two Howies, depending on the coverage at site. Okay. If we give you two Howie routers, then we'll give you. Sorry. If there's two Howie routers, we'll give you one Howie router with external aerials and another Howie with internal aerials. The setup on this, on this one here um, has been duplicated. I'm just looking for the... Okay, here's the RB750. This one is extremely easy. Who knows the copy and paste command on your keyboard? Okay. So we've got two people know, know, that knows what that is. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> There's a script in your document that you can punch out. Otherwise, once you've sent me an email asking for the documentation, it, it will be given to you in a text document. You just go uh, copy that text and paste it into the Microtech. <laughs> okay. So that is what the, the RB750 will look like. So all five ports are set up in a bridge mode. Okay. So port one and two, Vodacom, Telcom, port three back to the switch. Port four, you connect your laptop to it for configuration configuration of any of the devices. If you have the audio codes, plug audio codes into four or five or something like that, if you need additional uh, PoE ports. Okay. Doesn't matter which port you put it into, because you're going to look at the IP there. Yes. Look yeah, we, when we set up the, the file over, um, some guys set it up a, on, on a port basis. They say, okay, if, if uh, this route is, is down, look at port 1 as a gateway. However, we can't always tell you put Vodacom, yeah, Telcom, Vodacom port 1, Telcom port 2 because you're going to get the routers, you're not going to know which one is where without looking at the SIM cards, you're just going to plug in. So that's why we've done it on IP level. Okay, if that makes sense to you guys. Okay. Yes. By default, um, all what we need to do is, um, sorry, DHCP will be configured on the device. The d device's IP address will be 192.168.1.1. That is what we configure the device as. If we get uh, documentation up front saying, okay, we need the following IP addresses to be assigned, that is what we'll do. Otherwise, 192.168.1.1 there will be no NAT enabled on this device because the NAT is being done on the routers, not on the, on the RB750. Route 1 will be your strongest network coverage. That will be 192.168.1.2. Route uh, number, the second LTE router will be your 
secondary link and the one with the weaker signal and that device's IP will be 192.168.1.3. Okay, so we'll just swap it around. All the devices on the network will have a gateway of 1.1. .1. Okay. Once again, you'll be using Winbox. You'll log in, find your device, and the script is extremely easy. Just going to zoom out a little bit so we, okay, we can't get the entire script in here. Okay, there's a script that will be used. Okay, so as you can see, we, in the script, it adds DHCP for us. So what's in red, you don't punch in on your script. So if you punch this in manually, okay, what's in red, you, do, you remove that. The HTCP has been configured, all five ports are in a um, bridge mode. And then this is where we're going to add the local IP address, which will be the RB750's IP address itself. At the bottom is the IP address of Telcom, for example, 1.3, and then Vodacom 1.2. So Vodacom, our primary link, Telcom, our secondary link. If you need to change that, then we just change those details there. Okay. Copy paste from where it says forward slash interface bridge from that line up until this. Copy all of this, open up new terminal on your RB750, right click paste. Okay. When you do it the first time, it will log you out the Microtech. The reason is it's configuring the bridge. It puts all five ports into a bridge mode. So log back in, right click paste. It will override the first few steps. It will tell you already configured. Ignore that and it will do the rest of the config for you. Only thing that you need to do after that script has been loaded, you go into a system, identity, and you give it a name. <coughs> okay, here's an example of what the script will look like once it's been loaded. It's a bit, the writing is a bit small, so I hope you guys can see. As you can see, it says, add bridge, bridge one, interface uh, four, interface five, further to the top, all of those ports were added. If it gives an error, it says, device already added as bridge port. Okay, but it still does it, and it just, it's already been configured, so it will just carry on. Once it's been, uh, pasted, just press enter twice and the script is done. Okay. So, what, so part of the script, the DHCP has been configured, so you can just go to the DHCP option and confirm the DHCP has been configured for you and it's uh, giving out addresses, so just go to your lease tab and see that the devices are getting IPs. Confirm that the IP address is 192.168.1.1. And, um, and you go to bridge, go to ports, and just make sure all five ports are there. Although it's a script, it will do everything automatically. My, uh, just myself, I always go and confirm that the stuff has been configured. Okay. So that's the three options that I just go back and confirm everything has been done. Otherwise, for any reason, it wasn't added, something goes wrong, I won't know where to start looking. Okay. From, a, yeah. Yes. Okay. <coughs> so that is where you go and confirm the IP address, the DHCP. At the bottom is the bridge. So you'll see all five ports are in the bridge. And identity, that is where we're going to put the client name dash LTE file over gateway. So that when you open up Winbox, which I'll show you, the one that's highlighted says freedom LTE file over gateway. So if I open up Winbox and I ask you to connect to the, the file over gateway, you know exactly which one that is. Do you need to change the password from this one? Or this Preferably change the password as well. Yeah. It's not added in yeah. No, sorry, it is added in yeah. Yeah. 
So also change the password here, and it's the same password as the other device. All LTE devices that we give you, if it's a billion, if it's a Huawei, if it's a Microtech, um, or the RB750, if it's relating to the LTE part, we, ha we have the password as S at Samsung APN. Okay. Yeah, that's the Microtech. So there we've we've done a standalone Microtech. We've done the failover solution, uh, the the two Microtech set up as a failover, and then we've done the RB750 that that does the routing on the failover. Okay, all of this is extremely important for you guys to know how to do and how to troubleshoot. For example, if you get an install with a iServe um, solution, or your phones come up and they say DHCP fail. You log into the device that's giving out DHCP and you go and see um, under the leases what, what's happening. Is any other device not getting an IP address? Is it just that particular device? Plug your laptop into that device and see if your laptop is getting an IP address. Okay. Please, if you don't know anything about um, networking or IP or so forth, okay, this, the book's name other than Naaman, is called Network for Dummies. Okay. You're able to get it from PNA or wherever. It explains to you the basics of networking. Okay. So just take that book, read through it to confirm and see how to configure IP address on your PC and so forth. Okay. If you guys don't know how to do that, but I'm sure everybody knows how to configure IP address on the PC. Yeah. Brian, I know you struggle from time to time, but... You an exception. Okay. The billion routers are a, are extremely great devices. Um, we just we we've done a few already. Um, at this moment, we just there's a problem nationwide with the billion stock, so that's why I don't have a billion router yet to show you guys. It's not only us that's struggling to get the billion devices. Um, there's other ISPs out there that's also waiting for their stock. But when you get a billion device, know that you got, you got the best device there. Okay. I'm not saying these are bad, don't get me wrong. These are great devices. He's saying those are cock. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't put words in my mouth. What I'm saying is the billion is an all-in-one solution. Okay. Um, you have one... one this works. It works perfectly for what it's intended for. Yes. But the billion just suits our purposes. A lot better. A lot better. Because it's an all-in-one device. You have Wi-Fi, you have a dual SIM, you can so connect external the areas. Okay, the only downside I see with the billion is... Doesn't that PIE? Uh, no, not that, it's <laughs> the replacement of the, the billion for the Wi-Fi signal. Yeah. Why do the APN gives you the flexibility to have Why do you want that stuff in the room? On the if it's a mobile solution. For a mobile solution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So there might be cases where you might have but to supply, supply an APN. Yeah, but that is uh, depending on, on, the, on the building itself, the, the client's office. So a billion could be uh, good enough for an office like this, if it's an open plan office. However, if there's different rooms in that, then we'll uh, the client just needs to purchase uh, additional APNs for the other offices. Oh, not APNs, uh, access points. Okay, but so on, if you supply the Hawaii, as a mobile solution, the APN comes included. Now you go to site and they need an APN because the salesman hasn't installed. The people have to pay for it. You mean an access point? An access point. Yeah. Look, if, if there's uh, the mobile solution, there's definitely a access point. As soon as the billion becomes available, I'm sure we will start including a Wi-Fi access point as, as an, an extra. As an add-on extra. Okay. So shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. So if there's a mobile solution that you do um, and we don't provide you an access point, it means that we'll, you, we'll be using the billion as the access point. Okay. If you get to SAT, of course the, the sales guy and the, and the client would, would know up front to say, okay, we need additional access points, then you'll get that stock. Okay. okay. So. Okay, we're done with the Connectivity now coming in. 
<coughs> we're going to take a short break, a yeah. short break. Because um, I can see the smokers in the room are starting to get a bit nervous. And then we're going to start after that with all the devices we're going to connect on the other end of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've got all of that equipment, which is fine. We've got the ISO single cell solution. Very nice new product. Sorry? Okay, well, we're going to cover it now. So we will cover that when we get back. I think we'll start with that. Okay. Yeah. I'll give Quentin a bit of a break. I'll talk, he can handle the PC. Uh, <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so 